This lesson is on weird or atypical signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. So before we talk about those weird signs and symptoms, let's discuss prostate cancer, some risk factors for getting it, and some of the more common symptoms that can occur. So prostate cancer is a cancer of the prostate gland, which is a male reproductive organ located at the base of the bladder. If we look in this image here, you can see the prostate gland right here, right below the bladder. It actually encircles and surrounds the urethra, which originates itself from the bladder. And there can be either non-malignant or malignant growth. So non-malignant prostate growth would be what we would call benign prostatic hyperplasia. This is very common or it could be malignant growth, which would be prostate cancer, and this is the topic of this lesson. Now, prostate cancer is the most common cancer in males, and the prevalence of this cancer increases with increasing age as we get older. We're more and more likely to get prostate cancer, and risk factors for prostate cancer include not only increasing age, but also genetics, family history, and obesity. So some of the more common or associated symptoms that many think about with regards to prostate cancer include lower urinary tract symptoms. So you can imagine that because the prostate surrounds the urethra, if we have a cancerous mass growing in the prostate, it can grow to the point where it can start to push or impinge on the urethra, preventing proper urine flow. So we can get signs and symptoms like dysuria, which is a burning sensation when urinating, or we can get urinary frequency, meaning that you feel like you need to urinate more frequently as the cancer may cause an enlargement of the prostate or itself push against the bladder, making you feel like you need to urinate. We can also get symptoms like nocturia, which is urinating at night. So patients often feel like they need to go use the washroom, especially when they're lying down at night. And then if the cancer grows too much, it can start to actually completely block the urethra, causing urinary retention. So we can't even pee at all, or there's intermittent stream. So now let's talk about some of the weird signs and symptoms of prostate cancer. They're weird because they're not often thought about in terms of prostate cancer. So one of them is hematuria or blood in the urine. Now this may be microscopic or macroscopic. Microscopic meaning that you don't actually see it, but you would see it if you did a urinalysis. Or it can be macroscopic, meaning that you can actually see it. So you would urinate and you'd actually see the urine being red with blood. And in fact, macroscopic or what we would call gross hematuria is actually more likely with prostate cancer. So if you do have this finding, you're more likely to have macroscopic hematuria. So you're more likely to see it. And it's not that unusual. It's just not thought about. Up to 30% of patients may have hematuria with prostate cancer. Some other atypical or signs and symptoms that are not often thought about with prostate cancer is acute kidney injury. So this is due to urinary retention. As the cancer's mass grows and starts to block the urethra, we can have a backup of urine. So the kidney continues to produce urine, but that urine will then back up from the bladder, up the ureters, and into the kidneys, causing kidney damage. So we can get something called hydronephrosis and hydroureter. So as urine gets produced by the kidneys, it goes down the ureters to the bladder, but it cannot exit the bladder because the urethra is blocked. So we get urine accumulating up the ureters, causing hydroureter, and then eventually the urine can climb up and back up into the kidneys, causing that condition, hydronephrosis. Now some other atypical findings we can see in prostate cancer, or findings that are not often thought about, are issues with sexual functioning. Now one of them is reduced libido. So we can actually get reduced sexual desire in patients with prostate cancer. This is actually quite common. So it's a sexual dysfunction in general. This may be due to hormonal changes. As the cancer is present, it may alter some androgen signaling, or it could have effects on nerves as well. We'll talk about that here in a moment. So another one that goes along with this is erectile dysfunction. So difficulty achieving or maintaining an erection, both could happen. And this could also be due to those hormonal changes we talked about before, but also nerve involvement. If there is a cancer in the prostate, or if it starts to spread outside of the prostate, there can be issues with nerves that supply the penis, meaning that there may be issues with achieving or maintaining an erection. And the problem is that even when you're doing treatment for prostate cancer, some of the treatments can also cause some of these findings as well. Some other findings we could see that many patients don't think about include hematospermia. So hematospermia means blood in the sperm. So it would be 
essentially blood found in the ejaculate. So this is due to blood from tissue injury or from the cancer. So the cancer itself can either cause tissue injury, so it can injure normal tissues, and those tissues can then bleed, or the cancer itself may be bleeding a little bit, and that blood can then enter into prostatic fluids, and this would end up in the ejaculate. Then we can also get painful ejaculation. So pain during ejaculation can occur, and the reason is because during ejaculation, there's prostate smooth muscle cells that contract to release prostatic fluid. And if we've got a cancer there, that can cause pain during ejaculation. We can also get some other weird and atypical symptoms of prostate cancer, including rectal pain. So there can be pain in the rectum of some patients with prostate cancer, especially those with more advanced prostate cancer. So it can either be due to the enlarged prostate itself, so the prostate is enlarging due to the cancer, or due to a spread of cancer that can press on structures in and around the rectum. This can cause rectal pain in patients. So this is one of the potential atypical symptoms of prostate cancer. We can also get lower gastrointestinal bleeds in some patients. So bleeding is gonna come from the large intestine. This is due to metastasis from the prostate cancer itself. So patients can see blood in the toilet or on toilet paper. We can also see constipation occurring in some patients who have prostate cancer as well. So constipation can be decreased frequency or increased consistency of stool, and it's going to be due to an enlarged prostate that is bulging into the large intestine, or it's at least irritating some of the large intestinal structures to alter colonic motility. So if you look in this image here, here's the prostate. It's at the base of the bladder. It encircles the urethra, but you can see that it is adjacent to the rectum. And if this prostate gland increases in size or there's some metastasis to the rectum or the end of the large intestine, we can have issues with colonic motility or movement of stool through the rectum. So this can lead to constipation in some patients. So this is a potential atypical finding in prostate cancer. And another atypical finding we can see is a particular skin finding known as psoriasiform dermatitis. So psoriasiform dermatitis is an inflammatory skin condition that resembles psoriasis. So that's where we get the name psoriasiform, but it is not psoriasis. This is going to be due to metastatic prostate cancer. It's likely due to a type of perineoplastic effect. So the cancer is releasing inflammatory cytokines or inflammatory immune system chemicals that end up causing issues in other parts of the body. And one of them could be the skin, or it could be a metastasis of the prostate cancer to the skin. And with this psoriasiform dermatitis, we can have scaly patches. So it can look like psoriasis. Again, it can have cracking. So the lesion is going to be raised, scaly, cracking, can be thickened, red in appearance. So it can, again, look like psoriasis. Please check my other lessons on prostate cancer for more information on that topic. Please consider joining as member for members only content. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. And as always, thanks so much for watching and hope to see you again soon.